Hi there, in this video I will be presenting how you can easily install the EFQ stack, otherwise known as the ELK stack, but with FluentD being leveraged instead of Logstash, due to its high memory efficiency and log streaming capability. And in case you're wondering, the E stands for Elasticsearch and the K stands for Kibana. We are leveraging a Helm chart to accomplish this task, which is an official port off of the kubectl files provided by Google themselves in the cluster add-ons folder for the Kubernetes repo. In this section, I'll be showing from a Kubernetes dashboard perspective what has been deployed via the Helm chart. All right, so as you can see right here, we're going to our namespaces. We could go to cube system and just filter based on that, but for simplicity, let's just go to all namespaces. All right, great. So you can see that our actual load for the CPU and memory did go up based on our deployment, but that all of our workload statuses are green. So what we're going to show is that we Basically, this is our overview of our cluster. We have one master and one agent node. We have two persistent volumes declared, each bound using the managed premium storage class that directly links up with Azure. And now we're going to our daemon sets. And you can see that we have FluentD Elasticsearch deployed as a daemon set. And you can even see that this, is, this image is kh.gcr.io, FluentD Elasticsearch version 2.0.4. As one pod associated pod running. And then we also go to our stateful set, showing that we have Elasticsearch and it's logging actually going as well. Uh, we have two pods running for this, uh, logging zero and logging one. So let's click on one right here. All right, so we're actually in logging zero right here. So these are the logs being output from that pod. We could switch to the actual init container if we wanted to as well. And we could switch our pod to logging one. And great. So you can see that the logs are all perfectly working and they're being uh, forwarded. And we can now take a look at our pods again. We're just trying to click on our Cabana one. Uh, that's our FluentD Elasticsearch one. So it's going to be the one right below that. Perfect. So this is our Cabana logging. So let's actually see what this is currently outputting via the log. So the only thing that's currently missing is that the Kibana index isn't currently created, which we'll take a look at momentarily. Let's just take a final look at the services. So we have two services that got deployed along with the EFQ stack. You can see their internal endpoints for the Kibana logging, as well as for the Elasticsearch logging. And we'll take one last look at the pods. All right, now we can take a look at the Kibana dashboard. So we're going to click on this link here that's been presented thanks to the the nodes.txt from the Helm chart deployment. Great, Cabana loaded up. All we have to do is just select the index pattern along with the time filter field name. This is already preset for us. We just click create. Perfect. You can see that our index pattern got created and along with its schema. You can now take a look at the discover tab. It'll take a moment for the logs to start streaming in. Perfect. And now you can see all the available fields that have been coming in through all the logs, whether it's through journal CTL, QCuddle, all the various uh, pod names, as well as their labels. We can actually uh, uh, parse the logs through a time series index. Um, so we're just going to scroll all the way to the top. And you see right here, it's the last 15 minutes uh, we are, that we are querying on. If we wanted to, we could have go longer or shorter, um, but it would have, the logs would have to be populated at this point. So now we can click on Visualize. We haven't actually created any visualizations yet. Uh, same with the dashboard. This is just showing the amount of queries that have been done. And then finally, there's no machine learning or no graphs created. Um, these will be subsequent uh, videos that we will, will be presenting. And then finally, we're clicking on Management. What we're going to do now is show uh, the Helm chart a bit more in depth. But first, we're going to show actually what got deployed more from a kubectl point of view. So we're just going to get everything with all namespaces returned back to us. And great, you can see all the pods that came up along with their services, the replica sets and stateful sets, the deployments along with the daemon sets. 
and you can see this is basically the state of the of our cluster, along with all applications deployed on it. Uh, now we're going to take a look at our Helm chart, the FluentD Elasticsearch Helm chart, which we've converted from the Google Kubernetes repo. Uh, this is our notes.txt file, which outputs a series of helpful commands that are given to the user once the Helm chart installs. This is our services declaration of all our YAML files there for Elasticsearch and Kibana. You can also go into our stateful set. Uh, don't mind the error messages that Helm can't be correctly interpreted in VS Code right now. Uh, what we can do, though, is preview this template in Helm. You can see how it's going to render on deployment with release dash name being replaced with the release name you specify. And we're actually you saw at the bottom that we're deploying our persistent volumes with an 8 gigs declaration. We're just going to parse over our service accounts for right now. Uh, you can now click on our Kibana deployment. We can preview this template as well by just doing Helm preview template. You can see that it has a few resource limits on its CPU and memory requests, along with the ports that are going to be used and that the actual proxy port is going to be used to hit Kibana dashboard. You can now take a look at our daemon set for the FluentD Elasticsearch. You can see it's using version 2.0.4. We can preview this template as well. You can see the commands that are being passed inside the Docker container, along with all the volume mounts. And then finally what we're going to do is take a quick look at the config map, which discusses all the configuration that gets passed to the appropriate containers. You can see the system.conf, you can see the actual logs that are the types of log uh, aggregation formats that are going to be passed to Elasticsearch that specifies how it gets parsed. This is mostly from a FluentD perspective. And this goes on for the Kube proxy, the Kube API server, the controller, the scheduler, the rescheduler, the cluster autoscaler, uh, journal D Docker, the journal D container runtime, the kubelet. This is all being passed and parsed by FluentD towards Elasticsearch being visualized in Kibana.